Bienvenue à Comoros. Salut vous les Comoros. And welcome to Comoros. It's the 170th smallest country in the world, located somewhere between Madagascar, Mozambique, and Tanzania. It's so small that there are no ATMs to get cash. I had to wait in line at the bank to exchange dollars for francs. Got it. I'm assuming that 95% of you watching this have never heard of Comoros or know nothing about it. So I'm going to tell you as much as I can over the next three minutes. This is the flag of Comoros divided by five colors. The green ones, it show the color of Islam, which is our religion. The yellow ones, it's for the island of Moheli. The white one is for the island of uh, Mayotte. The red one is for the island of Andra. And the blue one is for my island, which is Gazija. My local friends, Hamza. Hi. And Armel. Hello. Hello. Who reached out on Facebook? Here. Picked me up at the airport. Yes, we are <laughs> Welcome in Comoros. to Comoros. And they've been showing me all around their land. Comoros, it's an Arabic name, which means Al Qamar, the moon. But French call it Comor, and English we call it Comoros. They are so cool, and I love hanging out with them. Here's what I've discovered about their country. About 820,000 people of mixed ethnicities call Comoros their home. And by looking at their faces, I saw a combination of East African, Arabic, and French features. My name is Drew. Joel. Drew. 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 Yeah. Nice name. Most Comorians speak at least three languages fluently, French, Chicamore, and Arabic. French is widely spoken because, much like its neighbors, was colonized by France for a long time. But the culture here feels more Swahili than anything else, like Kenya or Tanzania. Hakuna Matata. And there are touches of French and Arabic influences that make it very unique. I have a follower here. She's following me around the village. Speaking of unique, I've never seen women wearing this sort of beautiful face paint in my life. This is what we call kofia. Yeah, it's a traditional cup. Handsome. I'm going to order you a local food that's called pilau. It's a mix of rice and many spices with chicken and some legumes. How is that? This is as good as it gets in Comoros. Yep. Islam is the main religion, with roughly 99% of locals practicing, which sort of takes me back to the Maldives three months ago. But while the beaches here aren't quite on Maldivian level, they are pretty stunning and make a perfect place for relaxation. Beaches aside, the nature everywhere is incredible. You will find tons of coconut trees, rolling mountains, volcanoes, and even a salt lake. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the salt lake. lake! The color of that water. It's like four different shades of blue. The biggest active volcano in the world is here, called Mount Kartala. The lifestyle all around Comoros is slow paced and laid back, so don't expect anyone to be in a hurry. Quite the contrast from where I just was in Madagascar. It's also shockingly cheap here. Like, uh, five dollars. Five dollars? For that massive fish? Yes. Here we go, we have in the capital city, which is called Moroni. Moroni is surprisingly charming and enjoyable with colonial buildings, big mosques. Going inside one of the mosques. This is awesome. Vibrant markets. Okay, we are now at the local markets in Moroni. Wow. And pleasant streets. Comoros is a special place because I haven't seen any other tourists here. I feel like I have the entire country to myself. The reason for such few visitors is because getting to the Comoros Islands is not easy. There's only a handful of flights each day coming to Moroni and they are quite expensive. But if you ever find yourself in the region, it's worth stopping by for a brand new experience.